What if I told you that the solution to climate change has been running continuously for over 3 billion years? That the answer to sustainable energy has been operating right above our heads? That the key to efficient resource distribution has been perfected in every ecosystem on Earth? Welcome to nature's environmental algorithms, the most sophisticated computation system ever developed. Consider a desert after rain. Within hours, dormant seeds burst into life, turning the barren landscape into a tapestry of colors. These plants aren't just growing randomly, they're executing precise algorithms that calculate water availability, soil conditions, temperature patterns, and countless other variables. They're solving complex equations that would challenge our most advanced supercomputers, and they're doing it without using a single watt of external power. In the heart of the Amazon rainforest, a different kind of computation is taking place. Millions of species are running parallel calculations, constantly adjusting their behaviors, growth patterns, and resource consumption in real-time response to environmental changes. This isn't just adaptation, it's the most sophisticated optimization algorithm we've ever encountered. Look up at a flock of birds riding thermal currents. Each bird is performing complex calculations about air pressure, temperature gradients, and wind patterns. Together, they create a dynamic computational network that solves fluid dynamics problems our best engineers still struggle to model. They're not just flying, they're running atmospheric algorithms that have been refined over millions of years. But the true genius of nature's environmental algorithms becomes apparent when we look at how ecosystems handle resources. In a healthy forest, not a single molecule is wasted. Every resource is cycled, every waste product becomes input for another process, every system is optimized for maximum efficiency. This isn't just recycling, it's the most sophisticated circular economy ever developed. Take the example of a prairie ecosystem. During a drought, plants don't just individually respond to water scarcity, the entire ecosystem shifts its behavior. Deep-rooted plants pull water from underground aquifers, sharing it through fungal networks. Other plants adjust their leaf structures to reduce water loss. Soil microbes modify their activity to retain moisture. It's a coordinated response that involves millions of organisms all executing their part of a grand algorithm. This algorithmic brilliance extends to energy management. While we struggle to improve solar panel efficiency by a few percentage points, every leaf on Earth is running quantum-level computations to capture sunlight with near-perfect efficiency. Photosynthesis isn't just a chemical process, it's a highly optimized algorithm that has been refined through billions of iterations of evolutionary computation. In the oceans, coral reefs demonstrate another level of environmental computing. These living structures calculate and respond to changes in temperature, acidity, nutrient levels, and countless other variables. When conditions change, the entire reef system adjusts its calcification rates, symbiotic relationships, and growth patterns. It's like a living supercomputer that processes environmental data and responds with precise, coordinated actions. What makes these natural algorithms so remarkable is their resilience. While our computer systems crash under unexpected conditions, nature's algorithms adapt and evolve. They don't just solve problems, they learn from each challenge and improve their solutions. Every drought, every flood, every temperature change becomes a learning opportunity that refines the algorithm. Consider how mangrove forests handle coastal protection. These remarkable ecosystems run continuous calculations about wave energy, sediment transport, and water salinity. They adjust their root structures, growth patterns, and even their genetic expression in response to changing conditions. It's not just adaptation, it's real-time environmental computation at a scale we can barely comprehend. The soil beneath our feet is running some of the most sophisticated carbon sequestration algorithms ever developed. Microorganisms and plant roots work together to capture and store carbon, running complex chemical calculations that determine the optimal depth, form, and stability of carbon storage. While we spend billions trying to develop carbon capture technology, nature has already perfected these algorithms. In the Arctic, lichen demonstrates another level of environmental computation. These composite organisms calculate and respond to some of the most extreme conditions on Earth. They process information about temperature, moisture, light levels, and nutrient availability, adjusting their metabolism and growth patterns accordingly. They're not just surviving, 
they're running optimization algorithms that put our best software to shame. The way ecosystems handle energy distribution offers lessons our power grids could learn from. In a forest, energy isn't just distributed, it's dynamically allocated based on real-time needs and conditions. When one area has surplus energy, it's shared with areas in deficit. The system maintains stability not through central control, but through millions of local computations and adjustments. Even the way nature handles waste is algorithmically brilliant. In natural systems, the output of every process becomes input for another. Dead leaves become soil nutrients, which feed fungi, which support trees, which provide habitat for animals, whose waste feeds other organisms. It's a zero-waste algorithm that has been running successfully for billions of years. The migration patterns of animals demonstrate nature's capacity for complex route optimization. Whether it's monic butterflies crossing continents or whales traversing oceans, these creatures solve complex navigational problems using minimal energy. They're not just following instinct, they're executing sophisticated algorithms that calculate weather patterns, magnetic fields, ocean currents, and countless other variables. In wetland ecosystems, we see nature's water purification algorithms at work. These systems process pollutants, balance nutrient levels, and maintain water quality through a complex series of biological and chemical computations. Each plant, each microorganism, each chemical reaction is part of a distributed computing system that maintains water quality with remarkable efficiency. The way prairies handle fire demonstrates another level of algorithmic sophistication. These ecosystems don't just respond to fire, they incorporate it into their long-term computational strategies. Plants calculate and adjust their growth patterns, seed dispersal mechanisms, and chemical defenses based on fire frequency and intensity. It's a risk management algorithm that operates on timescales of decades or centuries. Desert plants show us how to optimize for extreme conditions. Every cactus is running continuous calculations about water storage, sunlight exposure, and temperature regulation. They're not just surviving, they're executing precision algorithms that balance resource conservation with growth and reproduction. The way beaver dams modify ecosystems demonstrates nature's landscape-level computational ability. These structures aren't just barriers, they're part of a sophisticated algorithm that calculates water flow, sediment transport, and habitat creation. Each dam is a computational node in a network that transforms entire watersheds. In the deep ocean, hydrothermal vent communities show us how to compute survival strategies in extreme conditions. These ecosystems process information about temperature gradients, chemical concentrations, and energy flows, creating stable systems in one of Earth's most challenging environments. They're running algorithms that could teach us about everything from energy efficiency to extreme environment adaptation. Mountain ecosystems demonstrate vertical computing, how different life forms calculate and adjust their behaviors across elevation gradients. From the valley floor to the peak, each species runs algorithms that determine its optimal elevation range, accounting for temperature, moisture, soil conditions, and interactions with other species. The way forests handle pest outbreaks shows nature's approach to threat response algorithms. When insects attack one species, the entire forest ecosystem shifts its behavior. Trees produce chemical defenses, warn their neighbors, and adjust their growth patterns. It's a distributed security system that operates without central control. Perhaps most remarkably, all these natural algorithms operate while continuously improving themselves. Through the process of evolution, each generation refines and optimizes these computational strategies. It's like having software that rewrites itself to become more efficient, more resilient, and more sophisticated over time. The implications of these natural algorithms for human technology are profound. As we face challenges like climate change, resource depletion, and environmental degradation, nature's computational strategies offer proven solutions. We don't need to invent new algorithms, we need to understand and learn from the ones that have been running successfully for billions of years. Consider how we might redesign our cities if we applied nature's resource management algorithms. Instead of linear systems that consume resources and produce waste, we could create circular systems that mimic natural resource cycles. Every waste stream could become an input for another process, just as it does in natural ecosystems. Our energy systems could learn from how plants handle solar power. Instead of rigid, centralized power grids, 
we could develop adaptive, distributed systems that respond dynamically to changing conditions. Each building, each neighborhood could become a node in a network that processes and shares energy as efficiently as a forest. Our water management systems could learn from how natural watersheds process and purify water. Instead of relying on energy-intensive treatment plants, we could design systems that use biological computation to maintain water quality. Every pond, every wetland, every green space could become part of a distributed water management algorithm. Transportation systems could learn from how animals optimize their movement patterns. Instead of fixed routes and schedules, we could develop adaptive systems that respond to real-time conditions and needs. Each vehicle, each route could become part of a dynamic network that continuously calculates and adjusts for maximum efficiency. Agriculture could learn from how natural ecosystems handle pest control and nutrient cycling. Instead of relying on chemical inputs and monocultures, we could design farming systems that mimic the computational complexity of natural ecosystems. Each field could become a sophisticated computer that processes and responds to environmental conditions. Even our approach to climate change could be transformed by understanding nature's carbon management algorithms. Instead of trying to develop new carbon capture technologies, we could work with and enhance the sophisticated carbon sequestration systems that nature has already perfected. The beauty of nature's environmental algorithms lies in their elegance and efficiency. They don't require massive inputs of energy or resources. They don't produce waste or harmful byproducts. They operate continuously, adapt to changing conditions, and improve over time. They're the ultimate example of sustainable computation. As we stand at a crucial moment in human history, facing unprecedented environmental challenges, nature's algorithms offer us a path forward. They show us that solutions to our most pressing problems already exist, we just need to learn how to read and apply nature's code. The future of environmental protection might not lie in inventing new technologies, but in understanding and working with the sophisticated algorithms that nature has been running all along. Every ecosystem, every species, every natural process offers us lessons in how to compute solutions to environmental challenges. The code that could save our planet isn't hidden in a computer, it's written in every leaf, every soil particle, every drop of water. Nature's environmental algorithms have been running successfully for billions of years. Perhaps it's time we stopped trying to write our own code and started learning from the most sophisticated programmer of all, nature itself.